Every 10 or so Rule Breaker Investing podcasts, we do it. We pick stocks. I call them five stock samplers because, like that little cheese cracker they offer you at Whole Foods, you get it for free. And they, well, here we are hoping you like it, recognize quality, and decide you want more. Well, the good news is that the performance of my five stock samplers have historically been excellent examples and demonstrations of why Rule Breaker Investing works. Why we hope, if you're not already a Motley Fool member, you'll join a service like Motley Fool Stock Advisor or Motley Fool Rule Breakers. They make wonderful holiday gifts. So, the performance of my samplers is good news. Here's the better news. It's 10 podcasts after our last one. Yep, that means that this week on Rule Breaker Investing, it's my next Five stock sampler. Let's go. It's the Rule Breaker Investing Podcast with Motley Fool co founder David Gardner. And welcome back to Rule Breaker Investing. I'm David Gardner. So glad you're joining me here in mid November. And it's been a pretty weak stock market, you may have noticed in the last few weeks. I'm even going to say months. In fact, I was double checking my own math. My portfolio peaked somewhere in midsummer. It was kind of middle July, and I am literally down 20%, so a full 20% shave right off the top here by mid November. And of course, it's always sad on the one hand because you don't like to lose money. You certainly don't like to lose 20% of what you had in just a few months. That never feels good. On the other hand, this has happened many times before. It'll happen many times in future. It's just kind of, you know, some days it's sunny and some days it's rainy, and nobody expects every day to be sunny. It wouldn't even be that fun a world. You couldn't enjoy the sun, I don't think, if it never rained. This has put me in a buyer's state of mind, even more so than usual. So, as I thought, what should we do for this five stock sampler? I decided I'd look for a few things. In fact, I have four attributes that make up each of the five stocks I'll be sharing with you this week. The first is that every one of these five companies is a big time winner for me and or for us at the Motley Fool. Specifically, actually, every one of them is from the Motley Fool Rule Breakers service. And every one of them has done really well. I'll have occasion to mention how how well they've done as I introduce them. But that's number one. And because one of my phrases, one of my watchwords of 2018, if you've been a podcast listener of this podcast, you've heard me say it, I'm going to say it again, winners win. I like to look among my winners during downtrodden times, because often, those are some of our best ideas as the market inevitably comes back in time. So, attribute number one, Big time winners, generally over at least a year, really over the only terms that count the long term, the long term. So longer term, big time winners. The second attribute is that every one of these companies made a September high. And so here we are in November, two months later, but every one of them looked great just two months ago. The third attribute, and the important one, probably the one that really Brings this podcast together is that every one of these is down at least 20% since that September high. So, putting these three attributes together, every one of these are big time winners that made highs two months ago and are down at least 20% from there. So, I feel like we stocked the pond that we're fishing in. And we'll see as we review this one, two, and three years hence, we'll see whether we were right about this group of five companies. and Because I like to be a little silly on this podcast, too, and this is just a sampler after all, we're having fun, I have a fourth attribute, which is not dissimilar from what I did 10 weeks ago when I did my most recent five-stock sampler. Rule Breaker Investing Podcast fans will remember that our last one 10 weeks ago was mm -mm good, and it was five companies, all of which started with the letter M, that I like over the next three-plus years. Well, I was kind of in a similar frame of mind, and maybe we can work this. Maybe my producer, Rick Engdahl, who very frequently selects the titles of each of these podcasts, maybe he can pun with me here. It hasn't all come together for broadcast time, but every one of these companies starts with the letter T. And so there might be kind of a teasing pun that we can play up here. So, just teasing, not quite sure. Uh, I'm not teasing at all. I'm very serious about these companies. I love these companies, but I'm definitely having fun, as I always do on this podcast, and with 
every five stock sampler, especially, I intentionally just looked at the letter T. I think one of the things I'm trying to convey by selecting just stocks that start with M or just stocks with T is that I could have selected another letter. And that's a big point. There are lots of great companies out there, lots of winners, lots of reasons for you and me to be direct buyers of stocks, not just mailing it in with the index fund and in my experience, getting a much lower return over the long term by doing so, but instead leaning in, thinking about what's great, becoming a part owner of those companies, and whether you go A, B, C, right down to Z, I'm pretty sure I can find five companies that are worth your time and thought in terms of becoming a part owner, in many cases with me, because I own a lot of these companies myself, for the long term, the only term that counts. So, to summarize, big time winners, September highs, down at least 20%. Every one of these starts with the letter T. You know, my one of my great moments in my high school career was senior year. I got the lead in the musical, and we were doing The Music Man. So I got to be Professor Harold Hill at St. Mark's School in Southboro, Massachusetts. And one of the great lines that many of you who will know, I hope, The Music Man, is with a capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. So every one of these, to me, starts with a capital T. And that rhymes with P, and that stands for fool. Well, when you spell it with a PH, well, you might have trouble, my friend. Anyway, all right, so without further ado, let's get it started. All right, we're going to go alphabetical by company name. And the first one up is to you. Now, to you, the ticker symbol is T W O U. Arguably, because this company name literally starts with the number two, and the full name of the company is just the number two in the letter U, you could argue this is not a T stock. But it is a T stock. It is to U. So let's briefly review where it's been. This stock made a high of $90 a share on September 4th. Today, it's around 53 as we tape this podcast on the afternoon of Tuesday, November 13th. 90 to 53 in a couple of months. Yep, that's down 41%. In fact, of all five of my near term losers here that we're going over this week, this has been the worst, down more than 40%. Now, why has it been a big time winner? Well, I first picked it two years ago in July of 2016. It's up about 50, over 50% since then. And then three months later, I decided. I really like this company. I like to add to my winners, so I recommend it again for Rule Breakers. That one's also up over 50%. So I'll take that two year return for any company almost any day of the week. So it's a double wreck and a double winner. So for each of these, I think maybe I'll just mention two things that I like about the stock and that I think about when I think about the company. The first thing I want to mention about 2U is. So this company is a big idea, built on a big idea that it could bring distance learning into some of our best universities. Most often at the graduate level, but yes, undergraduate courses too. So, two U partners, usually with 10 year agreements with some of the better known universities in the world, universities like UCAL Berkeley or Georgetown University here in Washington, D.C., or my alma mater, the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, the business school. So, these are the kinds of companies that two U partners with, and they're bringing students that these universities would never otherwise have had. Through the internet, they're bringing them distance learning, and they're splitting the tuition that these universities are getting paid that they would never have had otherwise. So it's a true win, win, win. There's at least three winners in there. A fourth one has been shareholders because people who have owned to you are pretty happy with their shares. And so, as I say, thing I like number one is it's a big idea, but the market cap is only three billion dollars. I mean, this is a company that has excellent existing relationships, continues to add more learning to its platform, and yet it's capitalized at just $3 billion. So, that feels like a small-cap company with at least a mid-cap idea and execution. So, that's thing number one I like about it. And then, thing number two is, 2U has been the victim of a short attack this year. So, there you may know about short attacks. If you're a rule breaker investor of any real vintage, you probably have come across this before. Somebody will decide that this stock is overpriced or something's horribly wrong with the company. And often, this person will put a 20-page screed on the internet about all the things, all the dirty linen and dirty dishes that the company that's being short attacked ever could have been connected to. And we'll say the stock's overpriced. And these days, because there's a lot of viral passing around on the internet, people will hear about it. And often, these stocks will decline. It's usually pretty short term. They're called short attacks because you can see it coming. Once it starts, you can kind of see it playing out in the weeks ahead. Usually, the stocks drop. But then, because we just keep holding our companies, if the company is doing 
a good thing in the world and doing well, in my experience, it comes back. And so the short attack creates temporary downdrafts in some really excellent companies. And so other examples from our rule breaker service in recent years, Shopify was absolutely short attacked for a while there. Ubiquity Networks, another excellent company. Um, I think Take Two Interactive got nailed at one point. Definitely Green Mountain when it was Keurig, and it used to be a rule breaker. It, it had a short attack too. Tesla has been short attacked a number of times. So this is kind of pattern recognition that we've gotten used to at Motley Fool Rule Breakers. So when I see it happen to a good company, then I think, well, that's too bad for the near term share price. Uh, but it does create an excellent discount for the rest of us who are going to be around for the long term and believe in the company. So that's thing number two I like about to you. And that's stock number one. Let's go to stock number two. Stock number two, well, I just mentioned it because I do think that Take Two Interactive had a short attack at some point a few years ago. You could check my math. The ticker symbol for Take Two Interactive is TTWO. This could sound a little confusing. We had two you, then we had Take Two. Take Two Interactive, though, is a completely different company from Two You. Take Two Interactive is one of the best video game companies of our time. The Hauser Brothers, um, behind Rockstar Games of Grand Theft Auto fame, Red Dead Redemption 2, which is an outstanding video game, one of the greatest, in my experience, of all time up to this point, just came out this fall. That comes from Take Two Interactive. So, where's the stock been recently? Well, it hit a high of $138 a share on the final day of September, 9 slash 28. It went from 138 to where it is today. 108. That's a decline of 22% for a company that really, literally did release one of the best products in its industry of all time. Uh, I love this company. I first recommended it in September of 2007 at $17. And then I added again another recommendation three months later. It was at 19 at that point. So it's gone from 17 and 19 to where it is today, as I mentioned, around 108. So, yep, it's been a Big time winner for Motley Fool Rule Breakers, six bagger twice over. I should also mention, just on a side note, that I also re recommended it in November of 2015, so three years ago this month. And a lot of people at the time were probably thinking, well, hold on now. You already recommended this stock eight years before, it's already more than doubled. Why would you re recommend it again? Well, from that $35.62, I'm happy to say it's tripled in just those three years. So it's a reminder, I'll say a little bit more about this company in a sec, but it's a reminder as a fellow stock market investor, you and me, that we should, since winners win, we should be adding, looking to add to our winners. And so I'm never afraid to take a stock. Buy it at one price, watch it go up some, and then buy it again, and watch it go up a lot more, and years later, buy it again, and take two Interactive, and how we've treated it at Motley Fool Rule Breakers is a great example. So, what are two things that I like about Take Two Interactive? Well, the first one is if you've listened to this podcast for a while, you know that I love games. I certainly love video games, in addition to all my tabletop board and card games. And Red Dead Redemption 2 is something that I really love. I've already spent hours uh, just in the last few weeks playing the game, and I love it. I highly recommend it. It's a Western, so it takes you back to the end of the Old West, just as we're transitioning into the 20th century. And it follows you're going to be playing um, a principal cowboy in a gang that's kind of a bunch of ne'er do wells, but they're trying to come to grips with the world changing around them. It's a cinematic video game. It's beautiful, on especially my Xbox One X. It's stunning in 4K. But also, I want to play up the writing of it because it's, it's written. Like some of the best movie scripts or some of the best exchanges you've ever seen on the big screen, you're going to see that kind of level of quality because that's how Rockstar does it in this video game. So I highly recommend the game. It's a great reason to like this stock. Now, the company's much bigger than any single product, so let's not get carried away. Red Dead will definitely pump up the numbers, I predict, in the next earnings report. But this is not a one trick pony talking about horses out west. This is not a one trick pony. This is a company that has a lot of different excellent products. And I guess the second thing that I like about this is that I think there's a chance that Take Two Interactive could end up being bought out in future. It's not something I'm not invested for that reason. I might have thought that in 2007 when I first recommended it. Here we are 11 years later. The company remains an independent. I love it when my companies remain independent. I still wish Marvel, one of my favorite stock picks of one generation ago, hadn't been bought by Disney. I can only imagine how well we would have done as Marvel shareholders. But you do get paid a premium when another bigger fish comes along and eats your smaller fish. And that seems like it's implicit in a stock like this. It could certainly happen, although I would be rooting against it. So, 
Their stock number two, Take Two Interactive, ticker symbol TTWO. All right, stock number three, continuing down the alphabetical list, stock number three is Teladoc. Teladoc, the ticker symbol is TDOC. This is a company, a rule breaker, that made a high like Take Two Interactive on the final day of September. Teladoc touched 86 that day. Here we are, less than a month and a half later. It's gone from 86 to 59. So it's down 31%. And yet the company is the same company for the most part that it was a month and a half ago. The market has turned down, but not this company's fortunes. So why is this one of our bigger winners? Well, it's a more recent pick for us in Motley Fool Rule Breakers. In fact, I picked it one year ago this month for the first time. November 2017, it's up 84% over the last 12 months, versus the market up 9%. So that's why it's one of our big time winners. And yet it's still only in still its first year as a rule breaker stock. Really happy to see that it's still up 84% despite having dropped 31% in just the last six weeks. So you can see it was already much higher. And indeed, I think in time it will be much higher again, which is why I'm including it on this five stock sampler. So what are two things that I like about Teladoc? Well, first of all, if you get to know the business, and feel free to click around, Motley Fool Rule Breakers is our service, if you're a member, or you can Google Teladoc and look over their services. But basically, it's kind of like what it sounds like. This is a business where you can use a telephone to contact a care professional and get help. So it turns out you don't always have to go to your doctor's office or even the Minute Clinic at the CVS, or sometimes those aren't adequate for the kind of conversation that you'd like to have. Well, increasingly, Teladoc is getting its service in HR and benefits packages for good companies nationwide. A lot you you might be working in a company where you have the Teladoc as a benefit. You could dial up a phone number and have a conversation about your health with somebody who is knowing and professional. And so this is just to me an obvious business. This is a good example of something that could have always existed, kind of like, yeah, why not? Luggage wheels. Wheels on luggage. That really could have always been with us all 20th century long, but for some strange reason, it took a long time to show up. Well, in this case, I think it's a little harder to get regulatory clearance and really scale a business like Teladoc. It probably had to wait till more recently with the internet showing up and improving our lives. So I think that's a a great reason for Teladoc's timing, but the company has clearly hit the ground running, both as a public company, but for years before that as a startup. And to me, it's one of those great stocks don't make you think stocks. It's an essay I once wrote. You can read it. I think you can Google great stocks don't make you think, David Gardner, and you can read my short essay. But often, in my experience, if you just kind of step away from the stock market and the near term Sturm und Drang of the markets up and the markets down and this kind of coverage of the markets, you just kind of think, okay, the time that I'm living in, what are the really obvious big things that matter? And then you kind of step away and just say, you know what, I'm just going to buy those stocks. Great stocks shouldn't make you think, shouldn't make you think too hard. I think often great elevator pitches, like a solid 60 second pitch, should, should be all it takes to tell you about Amazon or Netflix back in the day. And to me, Teladoc is one of those kind of great stocks don't make you think stocks. So that's one thing I like about it. And then the second thing I like about Teladoc is, well, it's true of all these, but sure, yeah. How about the decline? I mean, it's down from 86 to 59 in the matter of just some weeks. And uh, we're never looking backward at The Motley Fool or on this podcast. We're looking ahead, and I see sunshine in, in the future for this company and for you as a potential investor. So that's the reason I'm making Teladoc stock number three. All right, well, we're just about to get to stocks number four and five. But before we get there, I want to mention something that I shared with you some weeks ago. And it's six ways that rule breaker investors act. It's the six hows of being a rule breaker investor. Now, I did an entire podcast on this, so by no means am I going to go deep into these, but I'm going to put them right back out there in numerical order from one to six to remind you that if you're a new investor, if you're new to this podcast, hearing about these exciting stocks this week, there's certain ways I think you should behave so that you make the best use 
of this advice. Because after all, it's one thing for me to find a winning stock, and I sure hope I am this week, but it's an entirely different thing for somebody to invest in it in a winning way. How many people have come up to me at a book signing or after talk and said, you know, I bought that company, but unfortunately I sold Apple. It doubled for me years ago, and I sold it right then, and I would have made so much money had I not done that. So, it's one thing to give good advice about which company to buy, but it's an entirely different thing to make sure that you and I are behaving in a way I would call proper, even for rule breakers, people who break the rules. There are proper ways to break the rules as investors. So, here are the six really fast. Number one, rule number one, let your winners run high. Number two, add up, don't double down. I've already given good examples of me doing that with the Rule Breaker service with some of the companies we've talked about this week where we're adding up. Now, I should mention, this is a podcast where I'm looking at stocks that have tripped up, that have done poorly, but I don't view this as doubling down on them. In fact, I'm specifically picking stocks that are already well up for us as investors and just noticing that the market has treated these kinds of companies very poorly dunking on them 30% or so of their value in just a matter of weeks. So, I think it's it's a good place to be looking, but these are already winning companies, winning stocks for me, and that's why I'm featuring them. Not featuring stocks that are losers for me, I've got a bunch of those too, but I don't like to add to those, typically. Number 3. Trait number 3 for you as a Rule Breaker investor is to invest for at least 3 years. Yep, the word invest is a powerful one. I'm not going to go through the Latin derivation of it right now, but I did that on that previous podcast. It's about putting on the clothes like you're a sports fan, like you wear the jersey of the team games. That's the way we think you should treat your stocks. You should definitely be a fan of that company for at least three years, not jumping in and jumping out. Number four, remember the four tenets of conscious capitalism, something I've talked about elsewhere on this podcast. Number five, Max 5% initial allocation. So that means if you're starting out as a new investor, you should take whatever you have. Let's just say you have $5,000 to start with. I don't think you should put more than $250 in any single stock. After all, if you have $5,000, then 10% of that would be $500. And I'm saying you should have no more than 5% of your money in any one stock. So I really like the idea with $5,000 and low. Commissions, or maybe Robinhood free trading. And I think you should buy 20 stocks and have 5% of your money in each of those. So perhaps I've helped you today with my five stock sampler, but you have more work to do than just that. And the opposite of that 5% allocation is a huge mistake many people have made where they just put everything or too much into just one, two, or three stocks. That's not a way to succeed in investing. It might feel good for a month or a year with one good stock, but that's not a plan. That's not being committed to the markets for your whole life, which is what we're all about at The Motley Fool. So, that's number five, max 5% initial allocation. I should mention that when winners win, you might go over that 5% allocation. I'm fine with that. After all, what was rule number one? Let your winners run high. So, we're fine with higher than 5% allocations, but only when stocks get you there by winning out there in the business world and on the public markets. And finally, number six, attribute number six, aim for 60% accuracy. And what I mean by that is, I hope that you will try to beat the market with every stock pick that you make. After all, you could have just bought an index fund and gotten the market's return for the most part. So, Rule Breaker Investing, the podcast, is all about helping you find the companies that are going to beat the stock market averages. We have a good record for doing that, and over time, it's spectacular what that looks like if you're committed to this form of investing, my favorite form of investing, the best way to invest. Otherwise, I wouldn't spend my whole life talking about it on Fool.com or on podcasts like this. So, But you need to be shooting to beat the market more than more than half the time. With all that said, we're aiming for doing it six times out of ten, for beating the S&P 500. That's the measure that we use at The Molly Fool, for trying six picks out of ten stock picks to be beating that. But even if you don't hit that 60% mark, which I don't think I have with my public record, I think I'm closer to a coin flip. But the good news is, when you're coin flipping with these kinds of companies that go up six times in value or even more, which is one of the stocks I'm about to pick is up even more than that, then you can be a really pretty happy investor, even with only 50% accuracy, when you find the best companies of our time. So, that's why the math works out wildly to your favor and mine. Anyway, we're going to get back to our final two stocks now. But if you're new to what I just said, you might want to hit rewind on your podcast player and just listen to the last two minutes or so again, because these are really important topics. Or, 
you could go back and listen to the September 19th podcast. It's called The Six Hows of Rule Breaker Investing, where I really lay out the full scaffolding for you. And I highly recommend that, especially if you're new to this podcast or new to investing. All right, stock number four, the company is the fourth T. It's the Trade Desk. The ticker symbol is TTD. The Trade Desk on September 26th, two days shy of the end of September, was trading at $156 a share. And right now it's about $111, down $45 a share. That's, that equates to a 29% drop. Uh, this has been a wonderful stock. Like the others, it's a big time winner. In the case of the Trade Desk, I first picked it in February 2017, so that's almost two years ago at 34. I just mentioned to you it's dropped from 156 to 111, so we're still pretty happy with that 34 cost basis. And three months later, in May of last year, it had risen to 52. I re recommended it right there. So in both cases, it's up. And on the one hand, 250%, on the other, 138% in less than two years. This has been a great winner. So, what are two things that I like about the Trade Desk? Well, the first is I really like the CEO. Jeff Green is one of those classic visionary founder types, highly eloquent, feels like the smartest guy in the room for his industry. Now, if you've never heard of the Trade Desk before, you might be wondering, well, what what's being traded? And the answer is, what's being traded is the Trade Desk offers a platform where people who want to advertise come on and bid for where they're going to locate their ads. So it's basically kind of like eBay where you have buyers and sellers, but in this case it's called programmatic ad buying. So instead of doing it the old way, let's say through an agency where you would find out well what are the rates and where are you guys going to put me, you actually go right into the platform and you bid against others to have your ad seen in this or that site. So it's it's a brilliant use of the internet where there's already so much advertising, so it makes a lot of sense to me. And it makes a lot of sense when you have somebody like Jeff Green steering this company, the founder, um, it makes a lot of sense to me that it's been such a winner, and I expect that it will be a winner going forward. Again, the stock is down 29% in less than two months. The second thing I like about the Trade Desk is, it, I'm not going to go through my six traits of a rule breaker stock, but it is a true rule breaker. The six traits that I've written about for years that help me find stocks, uh, one of them is top dog and first mover in an important emerging industry. And this is kind of that type of a company. This is the top dog and first mover in a very relevant industry, ad buying around the internet, doing it through a programmatic platform. So this is the leader. This is kind of like, again, eBay for what it was doing back in the day. So this is a true rule breaker and I like that a lot about the Trade Desk including its outstanding performance overall. And here we come down the home stretch our final stock for this five stock sampler is the single best performer over the long term among all of these companies and it's probably the most obscure as well. The ticker symbol is TREX and sure enough that's also the name of the company. This is the outdoor decking company Trex. And Trex, just looking at recent history, since that's our focus in this five stock sampler, Trex was at $89 a share on September 10th, and today it's at 61. So Trex is down 31%. And yet, I first recommended it in July of 2012, so about six years ago, at $6.77. So you just heard me say it's dropped from 89 to 61. Well, from $6.77 to 61 has been outstanding. It's up over 830% since that pick. And I guess it's worth mentioning here, it's kind of fun to think about it, of all of these companies, many of which are very technology driven and are really creating platforms like the Trade Desk, or you think about Teladoc and its technology, or 2U bringing technology into classrooms, or video games, one of the best technologies of our time. And yet, the best performer among these is a composite outdoor decking company, which is a reminder that great companies are all around us. It's not always about the latest whiz-bang gadget, although I will say within its field, Trex is the innovator. So, this composite outdoor decking much superior to wood. I see this kind of decking in professional settings around the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, this is like the stuff that doesn't get badly damaged by water. And we've had more rain in Washington, D.C. than any year I can remember, maybe in my lifetime as a lifetime D.C. resident. So you got to love Trex outdoor decking. It looks like wood, but functions better. And that's why you see that kind of outperformance, a nine-bagger over the last six years. Usually, there is going to be a great product or product experience at the heart of a winning stock like that. In this case, it has 
really nothing to do with the internet, which is where so much of our great performance often is in our kinds of companies. So I love how how well Trex has done. And my two things that I love about Trex, well, one is that, and this is consistent with some of the others, but number one, I re-recommended it five years later. So yes, I did mention our cost basis to you earlier and how it's a nine bagger, but in February of 2017 I was casting about for what stock to re-recommend in Motley Fool Rule Breakers and I picked Trex again. So back then it was at 33, so it's gone up 91%. So what I love about this company is it's one of those companies, it's it's still small. It's got a four billion dollar market cap. It's a leader in its field. I only see more and more outdoor decking in the world's future as our population grows and people rebuild or build new. And so I really like Trex's positioning. I also like its relative obscurity. That's number two. Many people have never heard of Trex and would be shocked to think that you could find a stock like that that would do that well in a service called Motley Fool Rule Breakers. So sometimes you gotta love the more obscure companies. Peter Lynch did a great job highlighting these kinds of companies in his classic one up on Wall Street. Companies that don't sound sexy to Wall Street and don't make for exciting elevator pitches and yet look at that performance. Well Speaking of performance, I trust and hope that these companies will outperform in the years ahead. I'm setting a three-year clock for this one, and as I've been wont to do on this podcast, we'll try to check in each year going forward and see whether we were right. During this tough market of the fall of 2018, I'm still up for the year, but I'm well down from where I was this summer. You might be too. That's part of what happens for us as investors. We're going to have those days, months, and years where we're happy and others that were sad, but You can be happy even in the midst of recent sadness if you've got some money on the side and you've heard about something that you believe in today. And I hope you'll continue to diversify your portfolio. Or if you're just getting started as an investor, look at these kinds of companies and invest in them with us alongside the Motley Fool membership. Well, thanks a lot for joining me on this special five stock sampler episode of Rule Breaker Investing. Next week, I'm going to welcome. Paul Rice to this podcast. Paul is the founder of Fair Trade, Fair Trade USA. If you've ever bought Fair Trade coffee, that's his brainchild. Paul is a fascinating and dynamic entrepreneur and somebody I know you're going to enjoy. I saw him give a talk at the Conscious Capitalism Conference a month ago in Austin, Texas, and I thought, I want to get Paul on this podcast. Well, good news, he's consented to join with me. So I'm really looking forward to sharing Paul Rice with you next week. And then I should mention the week after that is our mailbag. So rbi at fool.com is our email address. If you heard something on this week's podcast that you have a question about one of these companies, or if you have your own story to tell, we'd love to hear it. Or if you're moved by what you hear from Paul next week, I always love sharing back what you're thinking in our month ending mailbag. In the meantime, invest well and fool on. As always, people on this program may have interest in the stocks they talk about, and The Motley Fool may have formal recommendations for or against, so don't buy or sell stocks based solely on what you hear. Learn more about Rule Breaker Investing at rbi.fool.com.